come to class. Now let's take chapter seven of this course about financial reporting. Now uh, we have impairment of assets. Uh, this is discussed under the international standard, uh, international accounting standard, okay, of the uh, IASB, International Accounting Standard Board, IAS 36, uh, impairment of assets. Now the objective of IAS 36, impairment of assets, the objective of IAS 36, impairment of assets is towards is to ensure that assets are carried or are valued at what assets are valued in the financial statements at no more than their recoverable amount in other words the objective is that was assets should not be carried or recognized at what at the higher of their uh, at the what assets should be carried and valued at what as they are valued uh, amount okay which is the recoverable what recoverable amount are we together at what are their recoverable amounts is that clear so now okay so i haven't said that Hello. I haven't said that. Let's let's take the scope of both of IS 36. IS 36 applies to all assets with the following uh, exemptions that are covered by other accounting uh, standards. Okay, it exempts what it exempts inventories. In fact, in short, uh, any standard, okay, any standard that has been or any uh transactions, okay, let's just take it that way. Any transactions that has been covered. In what's in a particular standard separately or on a standalone then we will be uh, what will be exempted okay we'll be exempted from what from other or from other standard because in that standard the treatment the measurement the recognition would have been discussed okay so 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 and to other in order to avoid what in order to avoid the double treatment or, or conflict in what's in the treatment of such transactions okay so it's better to stick to what to stick to, to, stick to, to yeah. It's better to what to stick to one uh, standard. Okay. So now such as what I have inventories, transactions of covering invest inventories that we discussed under IS2, uh construction contracts. Uh formerly it is IS eleven, but now it has been uh covered by IFRS fifteen, okay, revenue from contract okay from contract with customer revenue from contract with customer are we together so we have also different tasks we have financial assets now ifrs what ifrs 9 we also have what investment property add at value okay is 40 we have non current asset classified as ifrs 5 okay so all these are what all these are exempted from what from the treatment of the uh, impairments under IES 36. Okay, are we together under what under IES 36? We are not saying that those assets cannot be impaired. Okay, but what we are saying is that what IES 36 itself. Okay, IES what IES 36 itself do not do what do not discuss. Okay, do not what do not discuss the for mentioned uh standards okay but it discusses what it discussed impairment of what impairment of assets okay so inventories and assets might be impaired okay uh assets held for sale non-current assets uh, classified as edge for sale might be what might be impaired non-current assets itself that is ppe might be impaired investment property may be impaired and the likes okay when they are carrying especially when they are carrying amounts is what is less than what is less than uh when they are carrying amounts and uh, since they are revalued the uh, revalued amount so in that case we have what we have a uh, what we know as revaluation and uh, revaluation loss okay we take them as what we take them as a uh, revaluation loss are we together okay now definition 
The recoverable amount of an asset is defined as the area of its fair value minus cost of disposal and its value in use. Okay, so recoverable amount is what is the area of its fair value. Recoverable amount is the area, okay, area of its what of its fair value less what less cost of disposal and then value what and value in use okay so then what is fair value fair value is the price that will be received to sell an asset or pay to transfer a liability in an orderly manner between what between market participants and the measurement date okay between what between the knowledgeable buyer and what a knowledgeable seller at a what at an arms length uh, transaction okay so value in use is the present value of future cash flows from user and assets including its eventual disposal value uses the present value of what present value of future cash flows from using an asset including is what including its eventual disposal so if the income okay if the returns from the use of an asset uh, for five years has been, has been estimated to be what 100 in year one 200 in year two 300 in year four year three 400 in year four and 500 in year five so all these values you know they are for sure or they are for sure uh, cash flows so they should be what they should be discounted okay they should be discounted using what's using an interest rate or a discounting uh, uh, factor okay or uh, a, a discount factor or what or uh, effective interest rate and the likes okay so you use them to what to discount them to their present value okay so for each year you do what one plus the rate okay one plus what one uh plus the rate into bracket raised to power minus n that's number of years okay or you do what you do one divided by one plus r bracket raised to power n okay so is, is it that you do the inverse method or you do it straight away are we together so why in payment loss is what is the amount by which the current amount of an asset or a cash generating unit exceeds is what exceeds is recoverable what recoverable amount so in other words an asset is said to be impaired when what when the carrying amount when what when the carrying amount of an asset exceeds what exceeds its recoverable what recoverable amount are we together okay so now what are the stages stages in accounting for an impairment uh, loss there are various stages in accounting for an impairment loss and the one is what is the establishment of whether there is an indication of impairment so you should what you should establish whether what whether there is what there is an indication of what of uh impairment okay so how do you know when there is what if there is impairment so if the number of a um, number of production of a particular machine as what has been reduced uh, drastically okay or is reducing uh production by production production by production then you know that such asset as what is there is being uh, uh, is, is is impaired okay it's an indication that the asset is what the asset is uh, impairing are we together or if what if there is a change in technology okay so maybe this is how you do the way the way things are done now are different are different to how it is being done before okay so then in that case you do what you know oh this is an indication of what this is an indication of that that our current operation is being what is being uh, impaired so we have to what we have to change the system and bringing and bringing what are bringing new technologies are we together so the stage two is that once an impairment has been noticed or uh, there's the, 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 the there's indication of our impairment then you should assess the recovery but assess the recoverable amount so how do we assess the recovery amount is though what is just to take the higher of what of the fair value and what less cost to sell and what are the value in use higher of what higher of fair value less cost to sell and what and value in use are we together so then the state city is to write down the affected asset by the amount of the impairment to its recoverable amount so if the uh if the what if the current amount is say what is say 300 000 and the recoverable amount is what the recoverable amount is 200 so the asset should be what should be carried forward at what at 200 and not what are not 300 are we together the asset should be what the asset should be write down to what to 200 by the difference of what by the difference of one dollar so the difference of this one dollar is what is the impairment what is the impairment uh, amount are you getting it clear okay so uh 
what are the indicators of impairment okay now we have two types of indicators of impairment we have the external indicator and what and the internal indicator we have what we have the external and the internal indicators so what are the external indicators we have when assessing whether there is an indication of impairment i said this is required that at the minimum the following sources are considered external sources now if there is a decline in asset market value that's an indication to an effect to, to what to that uh, asset okay and also if there is significant changes in technology markets economic factors that have an aggressive effect on the company now mind you all these what all these uh, indications they are they are out of control for the company okay they are uncontrolled they are they are external factor or they are factors that cannot be controlled by the company okay so there's what there is a decline in the asset market value there's also changes in the technology there's changes in markets uh, consumer choices and the likes so economic factors that have that, that have an adverse effect on the what on the uh, on the company are we together so also an increase in interest rates affecting the value in use of the what the value in use of the asset so if there's what if there's an increase in the what in the interest rates of what of uh in, in the economy okay then what that will affect what it affects the value in use of what of the assets also because it brings out it, it brings out the Crucial cash flow estimates. Uh, why what? Why discounting them to uh, present value? It reduces what it reduces the amount. You can compare uh, a discount of ten percent with that of a twenty percent. Okay. So the, the present value for a discount of ten percent on the same uh, crucial cash flows uh, compared to twenty percent will be more greater than what than the present value of twenty or using what using twenty percent uh, interest rate altogether. So also an indication is that when the company's net asset have a higher current value than the company's capital was than the company was than the company market and capitalization okay so let's take the internal sources or internal indications of impairment losses one of the internal indications of impairment losses is what when there is evidence that the asset is damaged or no longer of use to the entity okay so if an, uh, if an asset got damaged okay or is not what is no longer put to use for an entity so it such is what is an indication so to that or to that asset being was being uh, impaired also if there are plans to discontinue or restructure the operation for which the asset is used okay so maybe formally what you use the asset to do is to what is to produce uh a goods that what what that what uh, two thousand era powers per product okay so now the the goods can uh, the, the machine cannot produce uh products worth two thousand era because of the because of uh, because of the impairment okay now the goods it's produced can only be sold in the market for a thousand naira. So uh that means that what it has what it has been uh, impaired. Okay, it has been what it has been because there is what the, there is reduction in the quality of, of of goods it produces. So also the type of the the, 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 the prices in which customers will be willing to pay for such type of uh, for such uh, type of quality goods or a uh, class of uh, quality of goods is what is one thousand and compared to at high quality which is what which is 2000 so this is what is an indication of what of the asset being what being uh, impaired how we together or when was when uh you decide to change or to change your line of business okay and why will you change your line of business if not that the business has been generating or has, has been generating a consistent uh, losses the returns are no what the returns are no more what are no more welcoming they are not encouraging so you decide to or you decide to switch your line of business or to discontinue that operation, or you might decide to or to restructure your operation. So also if there is what well, there is reduction in the asset expected remaining what remaining useful life and what and what and there is evidence that the entity's expected performance is worse than uh, expected. So in, in in such case, there's what there's an indication of what of a uh, impairment. Okay, are we together? Now uh we are progressing, right? Let's take our measurements or measuring recoverable amount. Measuring recoverable amount. Ah, uh, it has been explained that recoverable amount is what is the higher of our fair value, less cost of disposal, and its value in use. So, if either of these amount is higher than the current value of the asset, there has been no, or there has been no impairment. So, take for instance, the fair value of an asset is say, uh, five hundred thousand. Is what is five hundred thousand, and the value you use uh, is what the value you use is four hundred thousand, okay. And the cost of putting the asset to sale, okay, the estimated cost to sale is what is uh one hundred and fifty thousand, okay. 
So if you take out the uh, fifty five hundred thousand from one hundred fifty thousand, then you have a defect. You have a, you have it to be three fifty. Okay. So now three fifty compared to the value in use. So you have what you have a four hundred as well as the recoverable amount. Now, if the current amount of the asset is three hundred thousand, if the current amount of the asset is three hundred thousand, so therefore there has been what well, there has been no impairment. There has been what well, there has been no impairment because the recoverable amount is higher than what is higher than the current amount. So in this case, what you write down is what what you write down is the uh recoverable what, is the recoverable amount is what is the recoverable amount because what the law states is that what assets should not be carried as more than what more than they are recoverable or more than they are recoverable amounts. Assets should not be carried more than what more than they are recoverable amounts. So in this case, now you have what you have a uh, four hundred thousand to be written down as what as the current amount, the new current amount of the what of the assets. Why the difference between the three hundred, uh, which is the former current amount of the assets, with the four hundred thousand, the what the recoverable amount is what is a gain. Okay, gain or what gain on the uh, evaluation. And so should be taken to so should be taken to P or A. Okay, you'll be recognizing what's in the statement of profits or loss. Are we together? Okay, we are progressing, right? So now let's discuss the cash generating units. Cash generating units. I said this is defined the cash generating unit as the smallest identifiable group of assets that generates cash inflows that are largely independent of the cash inflows from other assets or group of assets. IS36 defines what defines the cash generating unit as the smallest identifiable what identifiable group of assets. Smallest identifiable group of assets that are was that are largely independent. Take note the keywords that are was that are largely independent of what independent independent of generating social cash flows. Okay, uh, from other assets or group of assets. Okay. So now, what do you know by good view, or what do you have you had good view before? Now, uh, good view is also uh, simply put, is a good name. Is what is the good name of an individual, okay, or company, okay? So it's what is 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 a good view of what of uh, is a good name is a reputation. Of what of an individual or what or the company. So now the existence of cash generating units may be particularly relevant to good we acquired in a business uh, combination, as discussed in our previous class. That the only recognized good we which is an intangible asset when they was when they are being they are what they are acquired and not when they are when they are internally was when they are internally generated. Okay, so in this case we are saying that oh if this good we arise as a result of what as a result of business combination. Okay, acquisition through business or acquisition through business combination, then the good way should be what should be relevant. It's, it's relevant. Okay. Now, if allocation is not possible, that is, if allocating good way, if allocating impairment to good way is not possible, then the impairment review is carried out in two stages. Now, you carry out an impairment review on each of the cash generating was on each of the cash generating units. Okay. Now, you know you are discussing what you are discussing cash generating units, which is what a group of asset or uh of which was each of these assets are independent of what of generating what of generating cash flows okay of generating what of generating cash flows towards to an entity are uh, we together towards to an entity now independent of what independent of a group of assets are uh, we together so now we said as it has you can do this in two 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 stages as allocating the payment to car generating units if by was by carrying out impairment review on each of the car generating units, excluding the good way and recognize any impairment losses that have arisen, or then or what or you what carry out carry out was carry out an impairment review for the entity as a whole, including the good way. So what you first do in the first instance is what you first charge impairments on what on good way, then the balance on the good way you what you parade them on what on the other what on the other assets in the, in that what in that car generating uh, units or what you for it, you apply what you apply the impairments loss on the total what on the total cash and generating units. Now, how do you allocate an impairments loss to the assets of the what of the car generating units? When an impairments loss arises on the car generating units, the impairments loss is allocated across the asset of the car generating units in the following order. When an impairments loss arises on a car generating unit, 
the payment loss is allocated across the asset of the cash generating unit in the following uh, order. First is to us is to allocate to the goodwill the cash generating or cash generating unit. Allocate to goodwill first. The next is to us is to the other assets in the cash generating unit on a prorata basis that is in proportion to the current amount of the assets of the cash generating uh, unit. Are we together? Okay, so uh, without wasting much time, let's take disclosure requirements about of the impairment and losses. And sorry, impairment of assets. Yes. Now, for all impairments, the following disclosures should be made for each class of assets. First is the amount of impairment losses recognized in profit or loss for the period, and the line item in which those what the line item in which those uh, items are included. Okay, and also similar information about reversals of impairment losses recognized in profit or loss for the period should also be disclosed and the amount of impairment losses on revalued assets that have been recognized or reversed in other words in other compressive income for the period and in the revaluation and reserve also companies are required to disclose the words if the recognition or reverse of an individual impairment loss is material to the financial statement there should be what there should be additional disclosure of one the event that led to the recognition or reversal of the payment loss to the amount of the payment loss recognized or reversed and to the nature of the asset for whether the recoverable amount is fair value less cost of disposal or value in use and how the figure for the recoverable amount was calculated was what was calculated is that clear to you Okay, let me take that again. Disclosure requirement for impairment of assets. And uh, one we have uh, an entity should disclose uh, for each class of assets the amount of impairment loss uh, recognizing profit or loss for the period and the line item in which those items are included. So if it is included in the words in, in the administrative course, you should disclose that so impairment loss has been recognized or included in the administrative course is the impairment on what on inventory is the impairment on a machine is impairment on equipment okay or if it is in the, it has been recognized under distribution maybe it is the motor vehicle or the delivery van that is being impaired okay you recognize not that under what under distribution cost or distribution expenses okay and if it is the machine that you are using the cost of production or in the cost of producing the uh, goods the company trading that is being impaired then you you can you disclose that oh you include it in the cost of what in the cost of sales, and you disclose that oh, impairment of asset has been included in the cost of sales to arrive at the gross profit uh, for the what for the year. Are uh, we together? Am I making that sense? Okay, so now another disclosure is that similar information about reversals of impairment losses recognized in profit or loss for the what for the period. Now, if there's any what, if there's any reversals that would that is you have previously recognized a profit or uh, 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 an impairment, okay, on an asset in the previous year, and now you have know, there's what there's a gain. Okay, there's was there's a gain on the what on the assets. Okay, so you have to now mind you, impairments are not what you cannot recover, what you cannot recover impairments. Okay, once an asset has been impaired, it has been impaired. Okay, losses are not what losses are not carried uh, forward. Okay, losses are what losses are not uh, carried forward. Are we together? So, except if there's an information, okay. Yeah, that you want to adjust for your you want to adjust for your power year what for your power year entries okay that's an information that the time you recognize the impairments there should have been be what the the asset is not uh, impaired so and such should have not been what such should have not been recognized so in that case you have to what you have to reverse it and what and adjust for your uh, financials are to are we together also the amount of impairments losses on revalued assets that have been recognized or reversed in other words in order compressive income for the period and the violation itself should also be disclosed and also you had to disclose additionally the event that led to the recognition or reversal of the payments loss the amount of the payment loss recognized or reversed the nature of the assets whether the recoverable amount is fair value less cost of disposal or value in use and how the figure for the recoverable amount was calculated are we together so now let's take a question on this so for, for us to work for us to uh get ourselves cleared okay and for you to have a to appreciate what we've been taking you or what you have been you have been taught are we together now i read the question on first january year one entity q purchased two hundred and forty thousand naira worth of machine with an estimated useful life of 20 years and an estimated zero residual value the position is on a straight line basis and the asset had been revalued on first january year to 250 000 
but with no change in useful life at the date. Okay, so on first January year four, and the payment review showed the machine recoverable amount to be hundred thousand, and it is remaining its remaining useful life to be what to be ten years. It remaining what its remaining useful life to be what to be ten years. Are we together? Okay, now on first January, the entity purchase what this is the cost. Or uh, let's take it at historical what historical cost, okay? Historical cost or what cost of the asset as a date of a uh, purchase. And we are told that it has an estimated estimated useful life of what of 20 years. So 240 divided by 20, we have what we have a uh, 12,000. Kind of press and uh, kind of punch your calculator to confirm that figure. And also we are told that the position is what is on the straight basis of which we have done that year. Without what, um, okay, taking note that the asset has no residual value, so that's why we have it here straight. That means it has a residual value of say 200,000 or 40,000. It should have been what it should have been 20, 200,000 after taking out the 40,000 for residual value divided by 20, of which we have at 10,000 error as what are the depreciation that will be charged or chargeable for each year. Are we together now? The asset has been revalued on first January year three, that is after two years of acquisition. From acquisition of, of, of the asset to what to three hundred and fifty thousand, but with what but with no change in the useful life as our what as at that date. So now to get that right, okay. Even though we have not uh, finished reading the question, but it's good this way. Why reading the why reading the question? You what you analyze so that and in fact I will urge you that in your exam can you first check on the was on the requirement of the question so that will give you a clear picture of where you are going. Okay, it's give you what give you a direction of. The examiner was, uh, of what the examiner is asking you uh, and why you come back to the body of the question okay then reading through the question you have what you have a uh, clear understanding in fact you have it direct at your hand or at your palm what the examiner is asking you to do to get the mind of the examiner and with that you'll be able to uh, be able to uh, put some valuable things down all together so the there was there's revaluation so now the position from that day to uh, from year one to year two is what is twelve thousand multiplied by two, isn't it? So that's twenty-four thousand. So kind of amount as this date will be what? Okay, let's let's leave it that way first. And we are told that on first January year four, an independent review showed the what showed the machines recoverable amount to what to be hundred thousand and its remaining useful life to go to be ten years. Now the recoverable amount is now what is now a hundred thousand. Okay. And we are told that it's estimated useful life from this date is now what is now 10 years. So depreciation value at the end of year four will be what will be 10,000 naira. Depreciation will be what will be 10,000 naira. Now, to determine the impairment loss or impairment gain, uh, sorry, there's nothing like impairment gain. To determine if there's impairment loss or there's, or there's, or there's a revaluation gain. Now, we need to what? Let's check on the requirements to know the mind of the examiner. Uh, what, know what the examiner is asking us. Now, first, we are required to cal prepare what calculate the kind amount of the machine on 31st December year 2 and what and end the, the valuation surplus arising on what on 1st January year 3. And also, we are to calculate the kind amount of the machine on 31st December year 3 immediately before the impairment. And also, we are to calculate the impairment loss recognized in the year to 31st December year 4 and the depreciation charge in the year to 31st December year 4. Now, without wasting much of our time, let's do this in quick time. Okay. Uh, suggested uh, solution. Suggested solution. Suggested uh, solution. Now, first we have what we have as uh, the name of the entity is not given. Okay, so let's just use entity A, and uh, we have uh, we have our cost. Okay, cost at first January year one. Okay, we have that to be two forty thousand. Okay, so let's accumulated what? Let's accumulated depreciation to date uh, to thirty first. Okay, December year two. Uh, kindly please don't uh abbreviate while you are in the exam. Okay. So the accumulated division can be calculated alternatively by saying 240,000 divided by 20 years multiplied by the number of years in use. Okay, so that's two years. And then we have what we have uh, 
24,000. So these we have us, we have a balance of 216,000. Okay, we have what we have to. We have two sixteen thousand. So this is what this is our carrying what carrying a month at the end of year two. Okay. So if this is the carrying amount at the end of year two, we are told in the question that what. Hence the evaluation surplus arising on first January year theory. So on first January year theory, what's the value of the asset? The value of the asset is 250,000. Okay. Uh valuation value of the asset as first January year theory. We have 250,000. Okay, if we take this uh, out of this, we have a uh, we have 34,000. We have 34,000. So this 34,000 is what is our revaluation was 34,000. Revaluation D. 34,000 is what 34,000 is our revaluation. What is our revaluation again? Are we together? So revaluation gain at first january year three okay so now also that's question a or one and b we have to prepare what the current amount of the machine on on 31st december year three current amount of the machine on 31st december year three okay b carrying amount on 31st December year three. Sorry, thirty first December year three. So we have what we have a carrying a month as at first January. 2013, we have 250,000. Okay, so depreciation, less depreciation during the year, less depreciation during the year. The learning year, we have about 250,000. Okay, so we are told that the uh, as at first January 2013 and third year, the uh, useful life remain what remains same. So and two has gone already, so we have 18 months left. Okay, so you do two eight two fifty divided by 18 months, multiply by one. Okay, so that you have what you have 13 eight eight eight. Okay, approximately 13 eight ninety. Okay, so we have we have a balance of one thing and uh, two thirty six, right? Okay. So one ten and two, one ten and two, thirty six. So these are what these are carrying amounts, carrying amounts at the end of what of year three out together. Okay. So what was the question C asking us? Are the impairments loss recognized in the year to thirty first December year four? So what's the value of year for the recoverable amount is what is only test one and what's our impairment? We say impairment is defined as what as the difference in the, the when the current amount of an asset exceeds what exceeds its uh revalue revalue or revalue recoverable amount. Okay, impairment was impairment loss at the start of year four. Okay, so impairment is what is the uh, is when is when the 
for the kind of amount of an, of an asset exceeds is greater than was exceeds uh the what greater than the or than the recoverable amounts okay so we have us we have our carrying amount as at 31st December year three should be what to be two thirty six one ten okay we have our recoverable amount as at first January year four we have hundred thousand okay so the difference is what the difference is one thirty six one ten okay so this is what this will be our impairment loss for at for impairment loss for us as at as at first January year four okay so as at first January year four and question D is asking us to prepare the depreciation charge in the year to 31st December year 4. Okay, so depreciation charge during was during year 4. Okay, so we have what we have. Uh, We are told that the assets are uh, in useful life is what is 10 years, okay? So we have what's cost minus square value, and we are not told that it has any square value, okay? All about all of our estimated useful, useful life, okay? So we have what we have uh, the current amounts, okay? The current amount is a uh, the recovery by month now is 100,000. We have the remaining useful life, which is what, which is 10 years. We have what we have 10,000 here uh, as a new depreciation here. Uh, Our months are we together? Okay, so uh, we are progressing, right? Oh, sorry, we have come to the end of this chapter, the end of this class. I wish you a very, 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 very successful diet ahead. And I urge you to always, to always listen to this video lecture to get it clear. And to get it right so as to what to help you perform well in the uh, coming examination goodbye